<clears throat> what is good, everybody? Welcome to Unfair Sports, where we're talking to you football, college football, and sports in general. We got my main man, Coop, back behind the mic. Coop, what is going on? What's good, Jay? Hey, I'm pretty excited. Uh, you know, bye weeks are bye weeks, and, uh, you know, you, you got to find something to talk about. And so I'm excited that we get to start talking about football again. Yeah, we actually got game to talk about. That's the best part, right? So thank you all for tuning in here on the YouTube channel as well as listening to the pod, wherever podcasts are downloaded and listened to. Uh, please, while you're here, hit the like button and the subscribe. That way we uh, know that it's real, that the love is real. And then jump in the comments and let us know, what do you think is your prediction for the score for this Iowa State game? Talked about earlier this week with my boy Chris from the Horns Down podcast. And uh, we're going to be doing a lot of greatness for you all today. So, Coop, got a game. We're traveling to Ames, Iowa to play the Iowa Hawkeyes, who are statistically the best defense in the Big 12. So I guess the question we have to ask ourselves is this. Start off with this one first. Do you think that the uh, Oklahoma offense is ready to battle this defense? Uh, so, yes, I, I really do. Um, we're starting to see push from the offensive line. Um, what I want to see is over the, uh, the bye week, um, how much more locked in did we really come along? Is Anton Harrison going to continue to progress with a lot of that main streak? I really want to see something out of the uh, the, uh, the guard spot with when Tower usually plays and then with Rain up center because if those two guys can just play one step better than then they played against Kansas, I feel like we got a good deal. Um, again, Riley had a big issue when it was with the uh, you know uh, th them dropping eight and uh, he would not take what they were giving him. But right now, the number one, is it right? Number one yards per carry in the nation is Eric Gray. And uh, he Before is making a big week difference. He was. He's now fourth. Is he, is is he, he fourth now? Yeah, two running backs past him. They have uh, – actually, let me pull up the stats. I was actually looking at them beforehand. Uh, oh, and I closed that window on accident. I'll pull it up in a second. But, yeah, he's now fourth. I think there's two running backs that have like 8.8 .8 yards a carry, but he does average 7.2. So, before going into yeah. last week's, he was number one. <clears throat> I saw the, the tweets that went out. Well, obviously, um, you know, I think that he is – doing a lot in the passing game. And if I was Levy uh, talking to that running back room, I would say, hey, listen, we're going to get four and five uh, and we're going to take four and five and we're just going to keep on pushing it. Um, we're going to turn to that offensive line and we're going to say, let's do this. And then only when you can run do those uh, guys actually start creeping up to help. And that's when I think that we continue to take some of those shots. I like what, uh, the, what we did with Braden Willis you know, out of the Texas game and with Farouk. And so I think that we can really put together a, a game to where we can rush and put a dent in those stats for the Iowa State's um, the, you know, defensive rushing statistics. Yeah, exactly. And I think the biggest thing is, is remembering that, let me see, at the stat pulled up here, Oklahoma, we talked about this before, Oklahoma is the, the third best uh, rushing offense in the Big 12 right behind Kansas State and TCU. So offensively, we're still up there. Um, total offense, we're the third best behind TCU and Texas Tech. So at 471 yards, 71.9, so 472 yards per game. Yeah. Uh, only beaten by Tech, who's right at 500, and TCU at 522. So offensively, we're still stout. We just got to figure out the defensive side of the game. But this is actually one of the best options for us, specifically exactly. because Iowa State doesn't have a good offense. They um, suck on offense. It's 101 rushing yards per game. That is tied for 118th in the country. Um, and again, that's something that we do. Plus, Deckers likes to give the ball up. The last time we saw him um, targeting or not targeting, he became a runner, but he, he, he fumbled the game away, you know, legitimately. Now, what I want to see, they just are coming off of a bye also. And so are they still ticked off or did they, you know, they kind of, you know, let the emotions slow down after that Texas loss because 
you know, they, they, uh, Xavier, uh, Hutchinson had a, a ball go right through his hands and then Deckers takes off on that early down and fumbles the ball away. Um, so do they let that cripple them or do they come back and try to capitalize, um, on a, an I, an OU team that frankly, they're once again, coming in here thinking they can win. Um, and they're, uh, going to show up and they believe that they can win. And so, um, OU, not just because OU is down a little bit, but because of the fact that they have played Oklahoma tough, uh, for several years now. Yeah, no, that's true. And, and Matt Campbell runs a very tight ship and very, um, disciplined team. Yeah. So, uh, so it's one of those you expect it to be good because of them, uh, because of the fact that they are that disciplined, they're always going to be following falling in line and all of that so unfortunately though this year has not been good for them they have lost all of yeah. their big 12 games they are 0 and 4 right mm -hmm. now um i don't know well we know why is their offense is awful you, you can't win in college football without a quarterback and an offense uh, especially in the big 12 because the big 12 is pu really putting out a whole bunch uh, yeah. of uh high scoring teams um uh, or whatnot so let me ask this Jump on to some other questions. Who do you think is the X factor on offense for OU in order for them to win this game? Um, it starts. It starts again in that those those middle three, the center and the two guards. We got to see those three guys play really, really well because that's going to let us run the ball. And I think that uh, I think that if we can run the ball, that is you know beating them at their game, and then they're going to start thinking. They're going to start cheating up. And that is going to allow everything else to go. Uh, again, I want to see, I want to see rain. I want to see him, you know, really, really, really straining and putting his hands on people and moving people. I want to see whoever, whether it's Robert Conjol or if it's Matower um, at that guard spot, I want to see them pushing it too. Also, I want to see some young pups. If they get a rotation in, I want them to look across the line. But this is, the, this is probably the best uh, until we play Baylor, this is probably the best, um, you know, just phone booth fighting by the big uglies up front that we have had. And so we've had good rush ins. We've had good players, but this is the best, uh, you know, defensive line that we've played so far. No, that's true. And yeah, that line's going to have to make some, make some openings or whatnot. Now, remember Texas was able to run all over this team. They rushed for 171 yards in <laughs> their game, but their passing game was very much questionable and it wasn't, honestly that good uh Quinn yeah. Ewers did have um he had what three touchdowns in that game like 100 and something yards passing but it, it just wasn't that wasn't as good as you would have expected going against Iowa State but that run game was dominant so they were able to do what they needed to do they just didn't weren't able to execute in the end and still went one 24 to 21 a mistake made by Iowa State should have shouldn't have it shouldn't have happened would have led to them taking an L, but they didn't have to. So that's the one good yeah. thing you can say out of this game. But so for me, when I think about the X factor for Oklahoma in this game, honestly, I think it's Dylan Gabriel. And the reason why I say that is because Iowa, Iowa State, we talked about how good of a defense they are, but in the Big 12, they're the top pass defense, top rush defense, top total defense. They're only giving up 184 passing yards a game. And that is uh, the, they're the only team in the Big 12 giving up less than 200. And when you look at it on a national scale, let me pull up the pass and defense on a national scale. They are the 16th best defense in the country as far as passing goes. So even in the game that they played so far, they're not giving up passing yards. They're not letting just anybody pass all over them. I think that's a big deal. Uh, so Dylan Gabriel's going to have to get accurate early. He's going to have to hit those slants like we were doing over the last week against Kansas. And, Take it to those boys. If, they, if he does that, I believe that we have a very good chance because in the games that Iowa State has played, um, these Big 12 games, the Kansas State game was 10-9. to 10-9. Yeah. to nine. They lost to Baylor 31-24, so Baylor was able to really put some numbers up on them. In Kansas, it was 14-11. to 11. So if you think about it, their defense is working. Texas 24-21, they had a bye week just like we did. It's working question is going to be can Iowa State uh can Oklahoma get those passing yards against Iowa State in that game which I think is yeah. the most critical thing and defensive factors who oh go ahead you got something else 
I was just going to say, you know, the game really is going on the road. This is, you know, what is the only second true road, true road test here. And uh, if you go on the road, this game was originally supposed to be on Thursday night. Uh, so we got to praise the football gods that uh, that didn't happen because uh, those games just always end up wonky. But um, again, we just got to avoid those overthrows and those just misses that uh, when we take a deep shot and he misses Mims or a Willis over the middle, we just got to, those, ha- those can't be there. So I, but, but I see what your point is with Gabriel. Yeah, yeah it, exactly. And, and so I'm, I'm ready to see, like I said, I like that the game plan was getting those quick passes out and making it happen, especially with the speedy guys that we have. Let's, let, let's do that. Yeah. All right. Defensive side, who do you feel like is the big X factor for Oklahoma going into this game? Uh, I, I got to say this. Um, they, they can't run the ball very well. Uh, Xavier Hutchinson, uh, is, is, he is, he's the dude. And so we uh, are going to say, I'm going to say the safeties in the corners, that defensive backfield. Um, if, if Bowman is back, he's my X factor. Um, if not, then I want to see, um, you know, I want to see whether it's Woody Washington lining up uh, across from Hutchinson um, because outside of him, they really don't have uh, that killer tight end like they used to have. And uh, so that's that, that's where I'm going to go is if Bowman's back, he's the X factor. I want to see how well he plays. Uh, he's, you know, is he going to show some rust um, or is he going to come out and be well rested? Um, and then if he doesn't play, then I think it's all Woody Washington because he has to be able to take that, take away one side of the field. And, um, I, you know, I have a feeling that with Matt Campbell and if I were Matt Campbell, I would be making Woody Washington chase guys down the field and then come up and make a tackle on an outside and wear him out because once you can kind of bust that, you know, get that first chink in the armor kind of uh, busted, then, then, you know, it seems like it, that adversity kind of cracks through the whole, uh, through the whole defense. Um, I, I say my dark horse uh, is our Mason Thomas. Um, I think that he is starting to come on and we got the R Mason and the RSJ with Robert Spears Jennings, uh, the hyphenated kids. Uh, yeah. I want to, I want to see some of these young kids, who have talent, athletic talent, you know, um, that surmounts a lot of these uh, these older guys. I want to see them start stepping up. Yeah, you know, when I I was on uh, OU Insider earlier today, uh, well, I, earlier this week, and looking at the notes from Brandon Drum about players coming back, and it looks like Ethan Downs is going to be back, potentially Billy Bowman. Um, so I think uh, Downs had a concussion. He was in protocol, but is more yeah. uh, precautionary, and he should be there. So I'm curious to see if Bowman and uh, Damon Harmon didn't really play much. I think they're both supposed to be back in a way, but I would love to see more Robert uh, Spears Jennings out there. Yeah. I've been wanting to see Jaden Rowe. I mentioned this before, but, you know, uh, <laughs> we probably won't see him until the next year. But we do need to see a lot of C.J. Colden, and I didn't get to talk about this. You know, he's, he's got the last two interceptions we've had this season. Yeah. And it feels like he plays better. Now, to kind of correct you from the conversation we had a while back, you said he was a short dude. He's actually listed like 5'11", 6 foot. Is it true numbers? I don't know. But I'm going to say this. But he's not 5'6". I do. I want to see more Colden. I want to see mm-hmm. more uh, CJ um, at that size because I think that having those nice, sizey corners at the 5'11", 6 foot range, and they, he actually has good hands. Take advantage yeah. of that. Why aren't we taking advantage and leveraging? And he, he played, he's played good the last couple of times. So I'm guessing he's starting to figure out the scheme. But at the same time, when I look back at the Kansas game, it looked like we were stepping back from the complexities of the scheme and we went back to more of a vanilla setup. And if the players do have the legs that the reports are saying that they have now, because that was kind of one thing, uh, they were – they looked fatigued, but they looked more fresh during the bye week in this week's practice, if that is the yeah. case, we should probably see a dominant defensive performance by this, uh, the sooner team. Yeah. I think that we'd all like to see that. Um, again, uh, Brent's press conference, he talks about how Robert Spears, Jun- uh, Jennings in, in, in question, uh, that he came back after, I think he said after the Nebraska game and he just showed a new rejuvenated, uh, approach to the game and knew what the the buy-in is going to be and kind of like what you're saying is they don't have some of that shell shock mentality with him or colden from the past couple years on ou's defense where you're just waiting for the thing 
to break bad. And so, um, yeah, I, I'm all for the guys who have earned it and they, if they can get out there now, Jaden Rowe, I mean, I, you know, let's, let's go up to Ames, let's put it to them early and let's get that four game, uh, that four game cushion, um, mm-hmm. you know, for some of those guys like Jaden Rowe. Cause I'd like to see what, I mean, is he six, two, 200 something and runs a four, four, something, four, three, something like that. Yeah. That's, that's not natural. And, um, and yeah. And so, uh, but I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited about it because I, I, I do, I think when we went into Texas, I had to convince myself we can win this. When we went in Kansas, I was like, surely we're not going to lose this. Right. But this is the first one where I'm thinking like, we actually have a, a very, very good opportunity to go up there and play sound football on both sides of the ball. Now, I don't think that we're going to roll out a 52 to 10 or anything like that. But, can't, you know, in their four games, uh, they've lost by, by a touchdown, three points, one point, and three points. Let's give them a little double-digit uh, loss. Uh, you know, again, there's first time for everything, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. And so, looking at this, so I went to go look at the Vegas numbers on this game, and it appears that the Thunder are moving towards a minus two, two and a half in this game on some books. Somehow the thun the, the sooner are sooners are now favorites in this game. And yeah. all the money is going towards Iowa State and the line keeps moving up. So it sounds like Vegas is saying, nah, I think the Sooners win this game. I think they win it. They you know, they they cover and they're trying to get as many well, they think the Sooners win this game. They're trying to get as many people on Iowa State as possible. Because as that line keeps going up, like plus two and a half to plus three. I'm I'm curious to if it actually hits closer to three come game time. If it does, OU blows them out. Because yeah. at that point, Vegas knows they're going to make money, and their goal is to trick all of these people into throwing money onto something. That, especially because the Sooners are two and five in covering the spread right now. They're two and five against the spread. So they're not really covering like we would have hoped. Mm-hmm. But if this line keeps moving the way it does with all the money on – Iowa State and the over has all the money as well. And the over under is set at 55 points. Do we really think Iowa State's going to score uh, score that many points against Oklahoma? Because I really don't. No. Um, again, as long as they don't get early success with Hutchison, I, I really don't. I can't see it happening. Um, I, I mean, I don't. Again, they, Brees Hall is not back there. Um, and uh, the uh, they don't have the tight end presence. Um, and Deckers, Deckers is a guy who's generous with the ball and he's going to give it up. So we're going to get something. And my bold prediction of the game on this one is, uh, our Mason Thomas is actually going to, uh, have a strip sack and it's going to lead to a score, whether that sets us up right at, or, uh, you know, midfield, or we score on a scoop and, uh, scoop and score. Uh, that's my bold prediction. It's coming. Okay. How many turnovers do you think they can get in this game? I think oh, you can get three turnovers. Um, I think, that, and again, is it so much as positivity for OU's defense, or is it just reading the script that has been being thrown out there by Deckers? Um, that's a, a three. Um, and, and again, I think that uh, there's going to be a, a, a forced fumble, and I think that we can get an interception, and then we are searching for that other one. Okay. Okay. What about you? Right. You know, I'm looking at this game. That's the one thing that I've said this. I've said this in the past. It's the one thing I appreciated about about Alex Grinch when he was here, is that he he got the guys getting turnovers, forcing turnovers, get some strips, go for an interception <clears throat> here or there, because um, turnovers kind of it, it it puts a bolt of energy into the defense to me, yeah. a bolt of energy into the team in general. Getting turnovers. It just – everybody gets happy. It's one of those people – it's like a happy stat. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody yeah. on the team and, and around them all get happy whenever a turnover happens. And it's killing me that we're not really getting any turnovers. We're not getting uh, interceptions. And it's like we're not even really going for the ball. And I understand that with it being in college, a lot of teams – I know like one of the rules uh, I, I was listening to, I forgot who it was, but they made mention – that Saban, one of Saban's rules is uh, to look for the hands, to watch the hands. He wants yeah. to be watching the hands, and then when you see the opportunity at the hands, you slap at the hands. Don't go, don't watch the ball. 
and it's more so because they're young and it's very easy to make the mistake on interceptions. But I kind of want a coach to say, go get some picks. Yeah. Jump her out. Go for a pick six. Give me some of those and have and make sure somebody's there, if, especially if you're going to do it. If you feel like you're going to do it, you know, have somebody there to help you recover. But that's just me. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we're dropping back into zone coverage. Uh, let's see one of those people who are coming over. Uh, let's see one of them take a good drop and make a break on a deep pass. Um, and, but I tell you this, uh, one of the reasons why it's hard to get turnovers is when people have been running the ball so well against that front seven, uh, then, then it just becomes pitch and catch. And that makes it really, really difficult. And you know what, again, I don't know if this is, would be considered an excuse, Jay, and tell me what your thoughts on this are, but in the past, we've seen just super erratic throws from quarterbacks and just all of a sudden, you know, pop a safety that's five yards behind the receiver. It's like this year we really haven't seen that. Like if people are overthrowing, it's going way out of bounds. So, uh, you know, let's let's see some of that. Deckers is a perfect candidate to, uh, you know, loft something over the middle or a slant that gets popped up and picked off. Yeah. Deflections is probably the way we win. <laughs> That's probably the way we're gonna get any turnovers in this game. So I don't know. Let's see what happens. All right, score prediction. Give me your score prediction for this game. I'm gonna go 38-16. Oh you. Ooh. That's I a think uh, 16. That's 54. Wow, that's just under the spray, under the over under. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And uh, here's here's why I think this is I think that we are on the road. I think that we're going to go out there and um, it may be a little bit tighter at half. But then we start seeing uh, we start seeing some of those offensive um, uh, you know, adjustments and we start taking some uh, some chunks after halftime. But again, I, I think it's good because uh, to tell you the truth, if I would have said, oh, you win 38, 16. Uh, any game in the future after uh, Texas weekend, and there's not one person who uh, wears crimson and cream that wouldn't say, sure, I'll take it. Yeah, that's true. Okay. My prediction is close to you, but I think it's going to be more. I'm going to go with 40 to 16. Say they go okay. over the over under at 56 points, uh, three field goals, and a garbage touchdown for Iowa State. I sense that the defense is going to turn it up this game in a weird way. It it just feels like they're, the bye week was much needed. Mm-hmm. And by hitting that, they now have probably rejuvenated things back to kind of the before times. Um, yeah. I was reading about the, the defense and kind of talking about the being tired and stuff. And in Brandon Drum's note, he mentioned – that the way they practice is just like it is at like Georgia and Alabama and Clemson. But this team hasn't done that ever before. So this Mm -hmm. year they weren't physically in the conditioning to handle it. Now you would think, Oh, you know, they've been training since like July. Yeah. But it seems like the, the intensity that comes from those big teams is a, is some, it takes you about a year to get there. And I feel like that's probably what happened to this team. It takes it took it's take, going to take a year for the defense to actually get there. They've got to take a few more breaks here and there. So with that, y'all hop in the comments. Let us know what you think about this Iowa State Sooner game. What's your score predictions? We want to hear from you. And uh, yeah, we're gonna get ready for it. So Coop, thanks man for uh, jumping on as usual. Hey man, I appreciate it. Yeah. Let us know. Show us what your score predictions are. Yeah, drop in there. Hit the like and subscribe button as well as share because sharing is caring. And uh, we will have a reaction video probably for you all on Monday. So with that, we'll chop it up in a few days. Peace.